The coronavirus is crushing the biggest names in U.S. air travel. In 2019, U.S. airlines carried an estimated 926 million passengers, a 43% increase from 2003. But that demand hit a wall in March 2020 after U.S. airlines reported an enormous drop in bookings amid the spread of the coronavirus outbreak. Health officials say air travel is causing viruses and bacteria to spread around the world faster than ever before. Air travel does hasten the speed with which infectious disease spreads around the world. Airplanes are efficient vectors for germs and bacteria and, and viruses to spread. The dawn of air travel meant that pandemics can happen. They can happen much more quickly. Airlines at the center of the epidemic have come under intense scrutiny for the safety and cleanliness of their cabins. Demand is just falling off and it's alarming. This is the worst crisis that he has ever seen in the airline industry. Airlines are gonna stop flying, okay? An airline without revenues, okay, is toast. Delta Airlines plans to reduce seat capacity by 70% and announced the carrier's second quarter revenue would be $10 billion less than the same period the year prior. American, United, JetBlue, and Southwest are also parking some of their planes, freezing hiring, and asking employees to take unpaid time off. To combat the pandemic, airlines have imposed new safety regulations and are using enhanced cleaning techniques inside their plane cabins. But is it enough? And how do airlines keep their planes clean? Airlines face an uphill battle keeping their planes clean. Mosquitoes carrying diseases like malaria and yellow fever can sneak aboard planes. To combat bugs and other pests, the World Health Organization and the International Civil Aviation Organization have advised airlines to use aircraft disinsection, a term that refers to the process of spraying an aircraft cabin with insecticides while passengers are on board or after they've disembarked. But it's primarily the job of the cabin cleaning crew to prepare your seat for its next flight. Cabin cleaners may be inside a plane for as little as seven minutes and as long as four hours. It all depends on the standards set by each individual airline and the amount of time before the next flight. Deep cleaning, when every inch of the plane is cleaned, happens overnight when an aircraft is parked at an airport. Though cleaning standards vary airline to airline, most carriers follow a few basic procedures. Cabin cleaners today generally are outfitted with protective clothing and disposable gloves, similar to what you see here. A single aisle airplane like the Boeing 737 seats up to 230 passengers and might have between three to six people cleaning the cabin, plus others cleaning the galleys and lavatory. The bigger Boeing 747 has more than 400 seats and there could be as many as 20 people cleaning the plane. Depending on the amount of time they have before the next flight, cabin cleaners will pick up trash like used tissues and half-eaten sandwiches. Clean surfaces like tray tables, seat cushions, and lavatories with an antibacterial solution and even vacuum the carpet. Despite these efforts, some people are so concerned about germs that they clean their own seats. In July 2019, Naomi Campbell's YouTube page launched a video of her airport routine. I love traveling. I was born traveling. <laughs> U.S. airlines have some employees who clean their planes, but to save money, the vast majority of cabin cleaning work is outsourced to dozens of companies across the U.S. In 2018, nearly two-thirds of cabin cleaners worked for third-party companies. Airlines often award contracts to the lowest bidder. I mean, essentially what the airlines have set up through contracting is they force the contractors to compete for who can provide the service of cabin cleaning as well as some of the other airline jobs at the lowest bid. And that means who can pay the workers the least to do the work because that's how the contractors cut their costs. 
There are dozens of companies involved in cabin cleaning at the almost 500 commercial airports across the country. One of the biggest cabin cleaners is ABM, a facility management firm and a public company that works with leading U.S. airlines and cleans more than 1.3 million planes annually. In 2019, ABM had aviation revenue of $1 billion, an almost 20% increase from 2016. Aviation revenue at ABM came from cabin cleaning, but also from other services like parking, passenger assistance, and catering logistics. In 2015, United Airlines launched United Ground Express, a subsidiary owned by the carrier that provides customer service, cargo services, and cabin cleaning for some flights. The other top cabin cleaning companies in the U.S. are a mix of private and public companies that offer a range of services from de-icing airplanes to baggage handling. Those companies include DGS, now known as Unify Service, Prospect, Prime Flight, G2, and Menzies Aviation. U.S. airlines are ramping up their approach to the coronavirus outbreak, cleaning their cabins more often and with stronger hospital-grade disinfectants. Coronavirus spread rapidly around the globe, killing more than 43,000 people and infecting more than 870,000 as of April 1, 2020, according to Johns Hopkins University. According to the CDC, COVID-19 is believed to spread mainly when people are in close contact with each other and by respiratory droplets from an infected person who coughs or sneezes. The virus can survive on a hard surface such as plastic for up to 72 hours and on cardboard for up to 24 hours, according to a March 2020 study. And according to the CDC, new research indicates that coronavirus RNA, the genetic material of the virus that causes COVID-19, was found on surfaces of the Princess cruise ship up to 17 days after passengers disembarked. Vicki Hertzberg is a biostatistician and the lead author of a separate study on how infection can spread aboard an airplane. She says the odds of coming into contact with an infected person is relatively low, but transmission increases when an infected person is sitting in the row in front of you, the row behind you, and the two seats on either side of you, what Hertzberg refers to as your perimeter of risk. Your probability of infection increases the longer you're in close proximity with somebody who's infectious. And the place where that's going to make the most difference is if you're seated closely to them on an airplane. To keep the air clean as it circulates, most aircraft used by American, Delta, and United are equipped with HEPA filters similar to the ones used in hospitals that provide a complete air change about 15 to 30 times per hour. This isn't to be confused with the mist you sometimes see before takeoff. That's condensation fog caused by the airplane's air conditioner being switched on. In response to the pandemic, U.S. airlines started using enhanced cleaning procedures on planes to combat the spread of the virus. Since the advent of coronavirus and COVID-19, they've all elevated what they do. Some airlines are using uh, fogging systems to disperse sanitizing spray throughout the cabin. They have elevated the intensity and strength of the cleaners that they are using. Take Delta. In addition to its normal cleaning program, Delta Airlines is using a high-grade EPA-registered disinfectant to wipe down common surface areas in galleys and lavatories. The airline has also added a fogging process used in many healthcare facilities that pushes out an EPA registered disinfectant on all Trans-Pacific and Transatlantic inbound flights. Beginning April 1, 2020, all of Delta's domestic flights will undergo the same fogging process overnight. And by early May, every plane in Delta's network will be fogged before every flight. American Airlines and United Airlines said they are also using high-grade disinfectants and multi-purpose cleaners on all touch points, including window shades, armrests, and tray tables. Aircraft that remain overnight at an airport receive 
an enhanced cleaning procedure. United said that because of the coronavirus, it will soon start using an electrostatic fogger, which is essentially a pump sprayer to disinfect the air and surfaces within the cabin on all international arrivals into the U.S. While viruses can live on a surface for hours or days, bacteria can sometimes survive on surfaces for months. In 2014, Dimer UVC Innovations launched the Germ Falcon, a disinfecting machine for airplane interiors that looks like a large food and drink cart with wings. The device is pushed by an operator and uses ultraviolet C lamps to eliminate germs and bacteria. The company claims it can kill 99% of germs on a plane in about three minutes. UVC is proven in hospitals to be effective against all known disease-causing pathogens. That's viruses, that's bacteria, and in hospitals, it's superbugs. On airplanes, we're primarily focused on viruses like influenza, norovirus, Ebola, and right now we're dealing with coronavirus. According to Krettenberg, it can take about 30 to 45 minutes for the germ falcon to disinfect a wide-body plane. For a narrow-body plane, like a Boeing 737, it can take about three minutes. I'd say it's not just about coronavirus. I'd say coronavirus is the topic of the day, but every year in America, we deal with the flu season, and the flu season kills tens of thousands of Americans every single year. Kreinberg said the company is in the early stages of working with the airline industry. So far, the device has disinfected some flights arriving from China at LAX Airport in early 2020 and is now working with Painfield Airport in Seattle to disinfect its terminals. While airlines are at the center of the coronavirus epidemic, cabin cleaning crews are the ones on the front lines. In March 2020, more than 600 contracted airport workers at Philadelphia's airport, including cabin cleaners, were told they were being laid off amid the coronavirus outbreak. In 2018, the most recent year this data was made available, there were 12,000 airline cabin cleaners in the U.S., a 10% increase from 2001, according to Service Employees International Union. Only about a third of cabin cleaners worked directly for the airlines that year. The median wage for non-airline cabin cleaners was $12.56 in 2018, according to SEIU, almost 1% less than the median wage in 2001. And that's not accounting for inflation. According to Ken Jacobs, the chair of the UC Berkeley Labor Center, since the early 2000s, cabin cleaners have seen a decline both in real wages and benefits. What's happened with the outsourcing is that pushes the real race to the bottom. Any airline service firm that wants to increase pay faces the loss of the contracts that they have. That puts downward pressure on wages and benefits and leads to high turnover for cabin cleaners. But despite these issues, cabin cleaning will be a priority for the airlines in the future, according to analysts. We're going to come out of this coronavirus crisis with an elevated focus on hygiene in our homes, in our workplaces, where we go to eat, and frankly, at airports and on airplanes. Passengers won't be as tolerant of dirty planes and dirty cabins uh, as they were. And importantly, their employees won't be as accepting of this. 